Hi everyone, Dr. Scott Therrell here today with two minutes on eye examinations. Now eye examinations can be done in many ways depending upon the type of practitioner. And as a chiropractic neurologist, we tend to look at functional movements as they apply to your brain and your body coordinating themselves. This is important for people who may have had a traumatic brain injury such as a concussion or a stroke, something like that, or whether it be a child or an adult who's complaining of memory or focus or attention issues, and certainly for children who have autism and autism spectrum challenges, we want to make sure that your eyes work very effectively and that your brain and different portions of your brain can control them. This would fall into the idea of visual motor, and visual motor is how your brain and your eyes coordinate themselves, and it's very important in terms of taking information in. Can your eyes lock onto a target? Can they follow them? quickly as well as slowly can they converge well. So let's go through a couple of these. We have and we're going to use for examination purposes something that's a little easier to lock onto. We're going to use Cleopatra as a finger puppet because when you start to look at something like the tip of a pen, the tip of the pen becomes hard to focus on sometimes and it's much easier to use a finger puppet that might have an eye or a nose or a mouth that you can lock onto. Plus it makes every child and adult patient smile when you start to have flying puppets during an eye exercise. So Cleopatra comes in. This is convergence and this is divergence. Convergence, divergence. Very important to be able to converge and diverge smoothly, especially when paying attention to tasks that are near to you, within two or three feet away, you really need to have accurate convergence. If one eye gets tired, it might start to fade out a little bit. That's going to be difficult for your brain to take information in from both eyes easily. It's very, very hard from a depth perception perspective, and it can also throw off when doing long-term desk work how fatigued your eye and your brain gets together and hurt some of your attentional systems. Then you have smooth pursuits. And if a smooth pursuit happens very slow, so for example, if I'm pursuing an object to my right, I'm using, for generalization purposes, my right parietal lobe to help my eyes track that target. Opposite is true as well. Pursuing to the left, I'm using my left parietal lobe. So we start to get into ideas of left brain, right brain, hemispheric differences, as well as different portions of your central nervous system that help your eyes move well. You'll also remember from some of our previous videos that the parietal lobe is very important in terms of how you perceive the opposite side of your body. It helps you understand what you feel in your hand and what your arm is feeling like in your leg, for example. So we tie together eye movements with all their physical types of symptomatology to get a better idea of how the brain and the body are working together. Now the third thing we look at for the eyes is what are called cicades. Now cicades use your frontal lobe and they're very very quick movements. So for example, again if we were using something like a finger puppet or any other target that you could actually focus one little small dot on, you would be looking at this. Or you could use two. So let's say we had Albert Einstein and Cleopatra for example. You could actually tell patients to look back and forth between the two and see how well and how quickly they can start those movements. That uses your frontal lobe. Your right frontal lobe pushes your eyes to the left. Your left frontal cortex pushes your eyes to the right. And then we get into one of the fourth movements we look at, which is how accurately you can stop your eye movements. It's great to be able to start a movement, but we also need to be able to stop these movements with great accuracy. And this involves your midline cerebellum. Portions of your midline cerebellum bring together balance centers, vestibular feedback, as well as how well you stop your eye movements, and they change your posture and your balance. So I wanna know whether or not if your eyes come over to the right side and they either overshoot the target or undershoot the target and then have to make a second jump to actually find the target, that's called hyper and hypometria. And that's where our cerebellum may not be integrating as well as we would like. As you go towards your right side, the right half of your cerebellum puts the brakes on. As you go towards your left side, the left half. So now we tie all of this information together from an examination standpoint to say, which part of our brain, frontal parietal cerebellum, may be getting more fatigued and is it more right hemisphere or is it more left hemisphere? And then if we wanna see those movements tied together quickly, we would use something called an optokinetic tape or an optokinetic drum, which is a series of colors, usually white or red or black and red. And this is what it looks like when you do these movements very, very quickly. As we go to the right side, it's a little bit more of a right brain activity. As we go to the left side, it's a left brain activity. Let me demonstrate this for you now. Watch my eyes closely, and it's almost easier if you just watch one eye.
That's a series of pursuits and saccades with both halves of your cerebellum having to stop those eye movements depending upon which way your eyes are moving. And when you link them very quickly together in a series, you can start to see neurologic fatigue in a different way where maybe you start to see that people can pursue better, but they can't saccade back. Or maybe they actually start to miss stripes going to one side. From an examination standpoint, I can't overemphasize the importance of a functional neuro exam that brings into consideration all of these visual motor activities. Your brain and your eyes work together all day every day to help tie together what you see around you and more importantly, how you're going to interact with it. So if we don't look at these movements and we don't have a sense of which parts of the brain actually cause these movements to work well, and work effectively and efficiently, we're missing a big part of how your brain and your body work together. If you're having some of these symptoms we mentioned here, make sure that a functional neurology visit includes a really great eye examination to tie together this important piece of how your brain and your body and your sensory motor systems work together. Thanks so much for tuning in today.